Good morning. Thank you for joining me, Pastor Zach Williams of Flat Creek Baptist Church here in Gainesville, Georgia, for another edition of New Horizons, the daily podcast and radio ministry of Flat Creek Baptist Church. It is always my greatest joy to be able to dive deep into God's Word with you on a daily basis as we just continue now walking through the book of Acts. I pray that these daily devotionals are a great blessing for you. And I pray that they help to encourage you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would like more information about Flat Creek Baptist Church and how we can come alongside of you in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, please go to our website, flatcreekchurch.net. Today, we're going to continue walking through the book of Acts. Now, just remember where we are in the context of this amazing book of the Bible. Peter and John, they have healed a man who has been laying by the temple complex, uh, crippled for the last 40 years, the Bible says. He's been there for many, many days, many, many years. They've healed this man in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. They've now stood on trial because they were preaching and teaching the resurrection of Jesus. They've been threatened to no longer speak in this name. Peter and John, of course, boldly say, uh, you know, we can't stop preaching uh, and teaching of what we know to be true. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. It says in the text that all the people were amazed because this sign had been done uh, and performed on a man more than 40 years old. Now, right after that, right after the threats, that's where we find ourselves today. The Bible says in chapter 4, verse 23, that after Peter and John were released, they went to their own people and they reported everything to them that the chief priest and the elders had said to them. Now, friends, uh, what, what I like to think about here when I look at verse number 23 is I like to call this a gut check for the early church. Now, that, that might sound like a, a, a so, kind of some, some strange lingo to you, but let me just kind of give you a brief illustration, and, and then we'll jump back into the text. So when I was a young man, I loved to play soccer. As a matter of fact, when I got into seventh grade, I began playing on our JV soccer team at our local uh, middle school. And then by the time I was in ninth grade, I was playing on the varsity soccer team. And, and it was just something I loved to do. I played soccer all the way through high school. And, and there was a time every year right before the season would start that we would start what we called conditioning. And our coach would take us out, and it would be in the middle of January. It would be cold, and this was before the high school league of South Carolina would actually let us practice soccer. So we would begin to get conditioned, and we'd begin to get in shape. And as high school students, many, many of us had not ran since uh, last soccer season. So for many of us, it might have been six months since we had really done any physical activity. And so we would come to this time and, and our coach would start to train us and make us run every day. And, and it would always come to this, this point in those two or three weeks of conditioning where, where it would be what you would consider a gut check. That the coach would put you through the most strenuous workout that you've ever been through in your life to the point where you felt like your legs were going to fall off, you felt like your heart was going to explode out of your chest, and you literally felt like you were going to lay down and die on the field. And it was a day that kind of separated the men from the boys, if you know what I mean. Because tomorrow, when we would show back up to practice, many of those guys, they would have quit. They would have went home. And only the ones who really wanted to play soccer would stick it out the rest of the way. And friends, if I could, if I could kind of paint a picture of verse number 23 here in the book of Acts, it would be that. This is a gut check for the early church. Those first three chapters of Acts, you know, uh, things are things seem to be going really well. You've got Jesus. He, he is still there in chapter 1, and he tells the disciples, uh, guys, you're going to be filled with power by the Holy Spirit. He's going to come upon you. You're going to be my witnesses. Chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes down. They speak in foreign languages. People here, 3,000 are saved. Chapter 3, 
They heal a man who's been uh, laying by the temple gate for over 40 years and he's been healed. The people are greatly amazed by what has taken place. So everything is going good. Everything seems to just be flowing so rapidly and so easily. And there seems to be this, this joy and this amazement of what's taking place uh, through these apostles. But now, all of a sudden, they've been brought before the mighty court. They've been put in prison. And they've been told, you cannot preach in this name anymore. They've been released from prison and Peter and John go back to the gathering of the early church. This early church that at this point is feeling good about themselves. This early church at that moment, man, the worship is good. The music is good. The prayers are going up. Everybody's happy. Everything is good. And Peter and John walk in the door and they say, okay, guys, listen, here it is. We spent all last night in jail and we were just threatened that if we continue to preach and teach in the name of Jesus, they're going to come against us. Uh, some of us might even lose our lives if we continue down this road. So at this point, you need to make a decision in your life. You need to make a decision in your heart. If you are not willing to go the distance, if you are not willing to pay the price, if you're not willing to suffer the reproach, if you're not willing to go forward all the way to the point where possibly you could lose your life, now is the time to leave. Now's the time to go home because the road ahead is not going to be easy. As a matter of fact, the Lord Jesus told us just before he died that we will be persecuted in his name. As a matter of fact, he told us that there's a time coming where they're going to bring us before the synagogues and they will kill us and they will actually think that they're honoring God in doing so. And so because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and because we know he's resurrected and because we know his words are true. We know these things are coming against us. So this is a gut check for the early church. If you want to leave, now's the time. Just go on and leave. But as for those who stay, understand what's coming. And friends, if I could say one thing to the church today across North America and across the world, it's this. This is gut check time. We're at a point in our nation's history and our world history where the church is, is, is under so much scrutiny. Over the last couple of years with pandemics and all these things, the church has become public enemy number one. And friends, I'm telling you right now, times are only going to get worse. Times are only going to get more and more difficult and more and more hard as we continue to press forward preaching the truths of the Lord Jesus Christ. What we preach and teach today is offensive to a lost and dying world and they're going to come against you and they're going to come against your church. And right now, this is gut check time. You need to make a decision. Either we're going to water this thing down and we're going to allow the world to tell us what to do or we're going to take a stand on the truths of God's word. No matter the consequence, no matter what comes against us, we are going to continue teaching and preaching the good news of Jesus because we can't stop talking about him. So today, you as an individual and you as a church collective, you need to make a choice. Where do you stand? What side of the coin are you going to fall on? Friends, as for me, I always want to be found as one of those that keeps pushing forward and preaching and teaching the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. May I never be found as one that wavers and falls away. And friends, I pray that years from now, you'll still see me preaching that same old story. So friends, today, set it in your heart to take a stand for Jesus. May God bless you. And I'll see you next time on New Horizons.